Legendary paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren's work inspired Hollywood blockbusters, but how much do you really know about the couple and the infamous hauntings they investigated? Edward Warren Miney, September 7, 1926 to August 23, 2006, and Lorraine Rita Warren January 31, 1927 to April 18, 2019, were American paranormal investigators and authors associated with prominent cases of alleged hauntings. Edward was a self-taught and self-professed demonologist, author, and lecturer. While Lorraine professed to be clairvoyant and a light trance medium who worked closely with her husband. In 1952, the Warrens founded the New England Society for Psychic Research the oldest ghost hunting group in New England. They authored many books about the paranormal and about their private investigations into various reports of paranormal activity. They claimed to have investigated well over 10,000 cases during their career. The Warrens were among the first investigators in the Amityville haunting. According to the Warrens, the official website of the Nspear, Vivi Glam magazine, and several other sources, the Nspear uses a variety of individuals, including medical doctors, researchers, police officers, nurses, college students, and members of the clergy in its investigations. Stories of ghost hauntings popularized by the Warrens have been adapted as or have indirectly inspired dozens of films, television series, and documentaries, including several films in the Amityville Horror series and the films in The Conjuring Universe. Notable investigations done Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren. Annabelle Main article Annabelle the Curse, Doll. According to the Warrens, in the year 1968, two roommates claimed their raggedy and doll was possessed by the spirit of a young girl named Annabelle Higgins. The Warrens took the doll, telling the roommates it was being manipulated by an inhuman presence, and put it on display at the family's occult museum. The legend of the doll inspired several films in the Conjuring universe and is a recurring leitmotif in many others. Perone family. In 1971, the Warrens claimed that the Harrisville, Rhode Island home of the Perone family was haunted by a witch who lived there in the early 19th century. According to the Warrens, Bathsheba Sherman cursed the land so that whoever lived there somehow died a terrible death. The story is the subject of the 2013 film The Conjuring. Lorraine Warren was a consultant to the production and appeared in a cameo role in the film. A reporter for USA Today covered the film's supposed factual grounding. Amityville The Warrens are best known for their involvement in the 1975 Amityville horror in which New York couple George and Kathy Lutz claimed that their house was haunted by a violent, demonic presence so intense that it eventually drove them out of their home. The Amityville horror conspiracy authors Stephen and Roxanne Kaplan characterized the case as a hoax. Lorraine Warren told a reporter for the Express Times newspaper that the Amityville horror was not a hoax. The reported haunting was the basis for the 1977 book The Amityville Horror and adapted into the 1979 and 2005 films of the same name, while also serving as inspiration for the film series that followed. The Warrens' version of events is partially adapted and portrayed in the opening sequence of The Conjuring 2, 2016. According to Benjamin Radford, the story was refuted by eyewitnesses, investigations, and forensic evidence. In 1979, lawyer William Weber stated that he, J. Anson, and the occupants invented the horror story over many bottles of wine. Anfield Poltergeist Main article, Anfield Poltergeist In 1977, the Warrens investigated claims that a family in the North London suburb of Enfield was haunted by poltergeist activity. While a number of independent observers dismissed the incident as a hoax carried out by attention-hungry children, the Warrens were convinced that it was a case of demonic possession. The story was the inspiration for The Conjuring 2, although critics say the Warrens were involved to a far lesser degree than portrayed in the movie and in fact had shown up to the scene uninvited and been refused admittance to the home. Guy Leon Playfair, a parapsychologist who investigated the Enfield case alongside Maurice Gross also says the film greatly exaggerated the Warrens' role in the investigation. 
He stated in 2016 that they turned up once and that Ed Warren told Playfair the Warrens could make a lot of money, out of the case. He corroborated the claim that the Warrens were not invited to the Enfield house and that nobody, in the family had ever heard of him until Ed Warren turned up. Arne Johnson Main article, Trial of Arne Cheyenne Johnson Cover art The Devil in Connecticut by Gerald Brittle was republished as a movie tie-in for the release of The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It based on the Warrens' real-life Connecticut case. In 1981, Arne Cheyenne Johnson was accused of killing his landlord, Alan Bono. Ed and Lorraine Warren had been called prior to the killing to deal with the alleged demonic possession of the younger brother of Johnson's fiancé. The Warrens subsequently claimed that Johnson was also possessed. At trial, Johnson attempted to plead not guilty by reason of demonic possession, but was unsuccessful with his plea. This story serves as the inspiration for The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, 2021. The case was described in the 1983 book The Devil in Connecticut by Gerald Brittle. Snedeker House In 1986, Ed and Lorraine Warren arrived and proclaimed the Snedeker House, a former funeral home, to be infested with demons. The case was featured in the 1993 book In a Dark Place, The Story of a True Haunting. A TV film that later became part of the Discovery Channel series A Haunting was produced in 2002. The Haunting in Connecticut, a film very loosely based on the Warrens' version of events and directed by Peter Cornwell, was released in 2009. Horror author Ray Garten, who wrote an account of the alleged haunting of the Snedeker family in Southington, Connecticut, later called into question the veracity of the accounts contained in his book, saying, the family involved, which was going through some serious problems like alcoholism and drug addiction, could not keep their story straight, and I became very frustrated, it's hard writing a non-fiction book when all the people involved are telling you different stories. To paranormal. Investigator Benjamin Radford, Garden said of Lorraine, if she told me the sun would come up tomorrow morning, I'd get a second opinion. Smurl Family Main article Smurl Haunting Pennsylvania residents Jack and Janet Smurl reported their home was disturbed by numerous supernatural phenomena, including sounds, smells and apparitions. The Warrens became involved and claimed that the Smurl home was occupied by four spirits and also a demon that allegedly sexually assaulted Jack and Janet. The Smurls' version of their story was the subject of a 1986 paperback titled The Haunted and television film of the same name directed by Robert Mondell. Union Cemetery Main article, Union Cemetery, Easton, Connecticut Ed Warren's book Graveyard, True Hauntings from an Old New England Cemetery, St. Martin's Press, 1992, features a white lady ghost which haunts Union Cemetery. He claimed to have captured her essence on film. Ed Warren and Lorraine Warren Personal Life Ed and Lorraine Warren were members of the Roman Catholic Church. They married in 1945. On January 11, 1946, Lorraine gave birth to their daughter named Judy Warren. Both Ed and Lorraine's interest in the paranormal started early. As a boy, Ed grew up in a house he believed was haunted. Lorraine began to notice her clairvoyant abilities at a young age as well. As a child, Ed recalled doors opening on their own, and strange lights starting to form in his house. Lorraine recalled her first experiences around nine. She remembered seeing auras around people but assumed this was normal. Ed Warren had a near-death experience while serving in the Navy during World War II. Ed entered the Navy on his 17th birthday. A few months later, the ship Ed was on collided with an oil tanker in the North Atlantic. A fire erupted, and all of the men on the ship had to jump overboard. As Ed was in the icy water, he prayed for help and was soon rescued. After that experience, he returned home and asked Lorraine to marry him. Ed Warren was a fine arts painter. The couple used his painting skills as a way to gain entry into houses they wanted to investigate. They would research houses they believed to be haunted, then drive to the house. After Ed painted the house, he would hand the painting to Lorraine. 
she would knock on the door and offer the homeowners the painting as their ticket into the house. Once she struck up a conversation with the homeowner, they would learn more about the property and hauntings. This process was how their investigative career began. The Warrens tried to rule out all logical or physical explanations before agreeing to take a case. They did not just take anyone's word when they said they were experiencing paranormal activity. Ed would go to the scene and use every avenue available to him to rule out all logical explanations before moving forward with the case. Ed and Lorraine were both devout Roman Catholics, and Ed was eventually recognized as the only Catholic lay expert on demonology. Their devout faith included an inherent belief in the supernatural and a world beyond. The Warrens worked closely with the Catholic Church during multiple exorcisms and their faith played an important part in their investigations. Ed and Lorraine gained popularity in the mainstream media, and even appeared on popular television shows, including The Merv Griffin Show, The Tom Snyder Show, A Haunting, and Scariest Places on Earth. As their notoriety grew, the Warrens expanded their audiences through media appearances, speaking engagements, and college lecture tours all in an attempt to prove that the devil was real. The Warrens continued to make television appearances throughout their career, and Lorraine even had a cameo in The Conjuring. Thank you for watching please like and subscribe.